It wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Hello there and welcome to this, the Resurgence Cup. Coming at you from California, USA, playing as the Wehrmacht, it's Momo for show. And from the north of Faymanville, approaching us right now, it's from Spain, it's Jezul, and he's playing as the United States Forces. I'm AE, and I'm here today with none other than the master of propaganda, hero of the Reich, defender of the fatherland, it's Imperial Dane. How are you doing, sir? Indeed it is me, and I am feeling quite well. Thank you for inquiring. We're off here to a lovely match in the Resurgence Cup. We certainly are. And um, it, it, we just watched a bit of uh, Brits. Havoc was playing as Brits. Brits looked pretty good. But uh, we do have United States forces here, and they've had a lot of changes of their own. Wehrmacht's pro pretty much going to be playing Italian Coastal Battle Group all tournament long. But what do you think about Airborne Dane? How, how well do you expect that to do against Coastals? I think it has like a lot of potential. Everyone's just generally been getting more popular as of late as people realize it's a very good tool for like just going fast for tanks. You can just rely on the airdrop anti tank guns and the bazooka paras to like, you know, do most of the anti tank work. Plus, the early pathfinders can also, you know, grab points and still hold off against infantry. They certainly can. And the build already gone for is two of those said pathfinders now, up to four models apiece. He's got a second rifle on the way. And Faymanville's one of those maps, Dane, you have to be really active as allies because if Axe is set up behind the victory point, behind that house, and get all of their support weapons rocking and rolling, it's actually quite difficult to unroot them. Indeed, indeed. And we got here an MD42 for Momo, who's going for a sort of more mixed opening here with a mix of pioneers and coastal troops. Unlike Kabuti, went hard away. in on them. Yeah, Prabuti in that warm-up game just now didn't quite get the balance and synergies of his unit composition quite right. But uh, Momo for show is a more seasoned campaigner at the tournament level. He's been playing in tournaments since 2016, but not as long as Jezjil. And Jezjil, if you do not know, used to be the best player in the world. He was number one all four factions in Company of Heroes 2, whilst winning every single tournament that year. The year was 2014 when he ruled the roost with an iron fist. Indeed. <laughs> Dean, do you remember casting back in the day? I'm sure you do. How many casts were just jesulin in epic encounters against pretty much everybody? And he was so difficult to take down, wasn't he, back in the day? He was. Very good player, very good player. But you also had like a lot of good, really impressive players back then as well. It's not like he just got there easily. No. Nobody's outlasted a lot of people. Here he is playing in 2024. And he's trying to take the north. He has taken the south fuel at the moment. He's one out over there. Oh! He's got a good few kills there. He's up to 13 to 7 on the KD. His rifles are coming in to try and pick off a coastal here. Yeah, we got the loop of company for Mom, but he's already struggling a bit just for the sheer number of riflemen and the Pathfinders. Yeah, he's got it. But taking the fuels will delay what's going to come from it. He may have to go 2 2 1 before even considering just going straight for a verbal bin. Likely, we'd also, I would not also be surprised to see some Jaegers out of it here. I think you're going to have to see Jaegers, Dane. He has saved 90 munitions, which is indicative of, of course, going for him. He's not planted any mines. Indeed, is not. There we go. We got Jessen with the motor pool. Gosh, that's quick. Straight in the centre of his base there. He's not messing around. He hasn't quite got the fuel for a Greyhound as of yet, but with double fuel income now, Momo's got to be worrying. He's got to be sweating bullets for sure. I mean, it's only like just almost five minutes and Jesslin has most of the map. He's got the fuel advantage. It's really not looking great for Wobble. 
Nope. Those plus 10 munitions points are often just missed out, apparently. They did not go to AE Island all the way in the south there. He just wants to get straight into the field and keep all of his units fighting. And he's going for the second cutoff in a moment. He's really starting to constrict around Momo. He is. Slowly flattening the life out of him. We got the 2 2 down the way here for Momo, as expected. Yep, 2 2 1 should help him out. And Momo's been trying to preserve manpower. He's not had as many fatalities in the flat past few minutes. It's made the game s s slow to a crawl, whilst Momo's just defending around the MG and trying to survive, quite frankly. Indeed, he's trying to get to the fuel point while Old's like, you know, just not bleeding out. This is a pretty tall order. Oh, and there's the designate defensive line. In AE's opinion, the number one ability I want to see reworked because you are going to be seeing a lot of this circle that rotates once every five minutes. Oh, infantry killed there. Did I hear right? Yep, that was a pioneer squad that bit the bullet, oh, and dear. then some. Oh dear, but 221's going to try and get a measure of vengeance. Greyhound's going to erupt onto the field, though he needs to be careful. Do we have Jaegers on the way, though, for Momo? Oh, crucially worth noting, with the designated defensive line, he also put himself munitions-wise out of range of a fast panzer Shrek. Oh no, that's 60 munitions he could have been spending on a... Fast Panzer Shrek. The Jaeger is going to hit now. He's going to have to field. He's going to have to defend the 2 2 1 with the Italian flame grenades. And that's going to be tough because the Grand can, like, pretty much deal with everything else he's got. Pretty much, yeah. This Jaeger, how close is he to those munitions? He's not close enough. 25 off. Well, no more. 45 off. Yeah, 45 off. My bad. 90 to get them, of course. I would not be surprised if might see a flat 30 and he just helped try and deal with the Greyhound. Momo has not had a big win in a tournament for a very long time, but Jezulin is not an easy man to beat. It may look easy to beat right now because Momo's had a fantastic start, and Jezulin looks like he's feeling every bit of those veteran years. But don't worry. Because um, he's still doing pretty well in this game so far. Okay, he's going for the Panzer books on the armored car instead. Of course, it's cheaper. And we got the Flak 30 on the way for Momo as well. Recon Leuter from Jezul, and he can see everything right now. Indeed. There we go. Panzer books are shot on the armored car. I was mixed up for a second there, Daniel. <laughs> My bad. And the Flak 30 is around on the scene. That's going to give Momo just a bit more leverage over Jesslin. But Jesslin still has the very, very long end of the stick here. He certainly does. And he's hitting Momo about the head with it like he owes him money. Indeed. May we finally see a designated defensive line get taken out, get capped in a high level 1v1. I've only seen one in the past several weeks. They're so difficult to uh, get rid of, aren't they? Indeed, especially because typically the player then puts everything they got around it. Yeah, absolutely. Becomes a citadel of defense. Right, he's kept the plus 10 fuel. The center is just guarded by a captain, so surely he'll be able to push into there. Jaeger. Uh, he's not been able to get the Shrek, it seems. Other nah, he went for that Panzer Books upgrade in the armored car first because that was 50 cheaper. We're talking 50 versus 90 munitions. Yep. Rifles flanking this pioneer. That could be another dead pioneer if Momo's not careful. That would also be his last pioneer squad then. Getting what there. To base, Flak turns to face the threat from the south, but there's one emerging from the north. Jesselin constantly posturing to find holes in Momo's defense. 
Yeah, I'm always just scrambling like to you know, try and manage things. As Jessen just keeps attacking, poking and probing. Right then, coast. Plus he has to constantly try and figure out where the Greyhound is. Yeah, you have to be so mindful of it. Right, what have we gone for here? We've gone all the way down to anti tank anti tank gun team para drop. Meanwhile, on the coastal side of things, you can see we've just got. Um, we haven't chosen to get the artillery officer quite yet. With I imagine Momo's just just so focused on the battle ahead of him, the officer's just not absolutely even remotely in his horizon. Yeah, absolutely. Right then, Jezulin's fuel's at 112 at the moment. He's not just going for a motor pool spam strategy, it seems. He's just holding back, possibly to get tank depot. Very likely. I mean, he could go for more light vehicles if he needed it, but a lot of the time, a single Greyhound will usually do the trick. And there's that mortar pit, something I think we're going to be seeing a lot of on Feynmanville in this tournament. Yeah, it used to be very famous for that in Code 2 with the Brits, when they could build in the base and just cover most of the map. <laughs> well, we're seeing something like that. Now, one of the things we were expecting to see in the balance patch was a nerf to this mortar pit's range, because it can go further than the normal mortar. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much firing from inside of space into, like, almost Momo's base. I think that technically is Momo's base. Let me just double-check that. Nearly. It's nearly Momo's base. Yeah, it's close. Captain put in his more. Got the people in there for Momo, as expected, as well. We are down to 200 points. Victory points wise, yes, and also has like just Ooh, a crashing right. lead. Oh, yeah, there's a one. Captain nice. always dies, apparently, in every single Coming Heroes game ever. Rarely sees the end credits. Rarely just seems to have a thing for like disliking officers. <laughs> yeah. Their received accuracy is always pretty bad. It seems that way, at least. There's the Verbal Vin kicking into action immediately. Pivoting around to take out this recon plane. Well, that's no, that's the anti-tank uh, para drop. Just in the nick of time. Perfect timing from Jessalyn, actually. Indeed, probably anticipating that Verbal Vin. Also, I'm really liking that uh, Fallen Leaf skin on the Viva Vind. Looks really cool. It does, doesn't it? Let's have a little look at that bad boy. Nice shot from the AT gun. Rifles pushing through the center. Pathfinders just trying to cap in the north. But Momo has not been able to get close to that central victory point. Jezulin has been doing really well to control every VP he can. He's 500 to 169 right now, and it's only 13 minutes into the game. Yes, then he's just dominating more and more here to the point we could almost bill him for it. <laughs> yeah, Greyhound using these buildings to that great effect. And here comes the infantry, but the Verbal Vin wasn't disposed of quite yet, so everything gets suppressed. You're yeah, rather the fact 30 certainly doesn't hurt either for Momo's case there. That's a lot of flat guns. It is. It's almost like Berlin circa 1945, just trying to defend with flak for all they can do. Oh, Brown nearly taking out the 2-2-1 Panzer Booster, which is not facing the right way right now. I'll draw your attention to the south. Momo's trying to cap it there for what he can do. The ground's probably going to go and deal with that. Yeah, he's probably trying to take advantage of Jesslin's hard offense from the north, just sneak into the south. It's a common trick to see with some, you know, skilled players. They're like, you know, realize, okay, opponents, like, hyper-focus on one zone, so they just try and, like, creep in and, like, make good of that elsewhere. Yeah, it's, it's one of the best parts about one versus one, I feel. You, you do have more options. Mine! <laughs> oh, was no! Triggered by the Greyhound. The Coastals didn't know it was there. He did actually pick Coastal Wall to, like, you know, get the mines a bit cheaper, too. Got him. That mortar pit just keeps giving uh, Momo here a uh, headache and a half. Yeah, and, second and 
I mean, the more tanks you get out, the better you'll do against mortars, of course, because in this game, mortars do not counter vehicles very well. So, um, yeah, I mean, he'll be able to resist a little bit better now, but I think Jezulin's been waiting to see what he can do with his fuel fat. There's Tank Depot up and base. There you go. Got a second vehicle in for moments. He just focuses on what he can deal ahead of him. Guessing Marta's next. Yeah, that's a good shout, Dane. That'll certainly help him, because I think Bulldozer's next for Jezulin. Yeah, I mean, they've been buffed for, like, what, three patches in a row now? And they're really they're good all... now. They pack a punch, but I like the strength of the Bulldozer, Dane. It's one of those things I'm okay with. I just maybe Axis need more counters or something. Oh, big shot on the verbal there. AT gun yeah, couldn't finish the job. I'm just not entirely sure if they need to, like, buff it three patches in a row. Like, it was already pretty good before that. I think yeah. this, this one reason was a bit much. Maybe, yeah. I think the last push was... Oh, there we go. Nice push into the ground. Can it kill the verbal? Needs a lucky pen. Doesn't get it on the first attempt. There's an 18 a Ooh. Here we go. Need to keep the front towards the... Great oh, hand. Down he close the side. Oh, so close. And now they got the 2-1 to -one with the Panzerbüchse. There's your detoyed Greyhound. Gets yeah, he gets it indeed. In the north, we've got Pathfinders, Rifles all pushing in. Well, that's a pretty big win there for Momo. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Carpet bombing. Nothing's going to be in range, though, I don't think. Oh, the Pioneers were. Oh dear, and that tree is absolutely scattered. Wow! I could have done that with in my garden. I've had to cut a tree down with a pickaxe in the last month. That would have been more helpful. I've had to cut one down with a saw. That was tough. Yeah, I did I a bit of hand saw, a bit of pickaxe. It was good fun, though. It's it's gone now, though, Dane. You'll be happy to know I, I defeated Mother Earth. For now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> and we do get the Hunter Farm of Sherman there for Jessalyn. Yeah, as predicted, that's... To be expected, and we do have the Marder as well. So both of their next choices are the most obvious ones. Coastal's lucky to survive there. Be expecting bars, to be honest, at some point, Dane. Surely. Yeah, likely at some point, but I don't think Jessen has like a great need for it. Although, of course, losing the Greyhound does mean he definitely would benefit a lot more from them. trying to use this house in the center now as cover for his uh, his vehicles but the AT guns found an angle on them that's good play from Jezulin of course a, a man that's had a lot of famous games on this map back in the day in the ESL era of Company Heroes 2 competitive yep. let me see what Momo goes for next I'm guessing though more martyrs because it typically tends to be like you know the Almark build rule is like just go for Viblins, go for martyrs and repeat until you either win or lose no matter what happens because you typically can't afford to like tech up at that point because the Panzer company is just too expensive in a way versus the USF economy right then He's going to launch an attack in the south. Momo show trying to pivot down there and see if he can get some victory points to give him a safety net because he's not going to get through this in the centre with any ease, especially with that AT gun finding the Marder. Bulldozer pushing in and taking out the Marder. That's not good for Momo. Not good at all. Phosphorus. We did get the uh, round down the Sherman, but too late. Just and we do get the pass now for Jessalyn. It's a bad positioning of the de designate defensive line, I feel, but Momo just is desperate to keep that fuel. He's sacrificing victory points for fuel because, of course, he could have put it on his southern cutoff, couldn't he? The one that the rifles are currently capping. Yeah, I mean, it used to make sense earlier, but now it's starting to burn a bit in the arse as Jessalyn is just focusing on the rest of the map. And more crucially, the victory points now that they're, you know, pretty good way to just steamroll his way to victory. Yeah, or bulldoze his way to victory in this case. Indeed. Right, the northern victory point's been capped to counteract Momo's efforts in the south. 
We have to get a second two to one for Momo. I wonder if he's also going to go for Panzer Buchs on that one, or what he's intending with that. That's a very interesting little thing. Yes, I feel the game's heating up quite a bit. Look at that Vet 3 Mortar Pit, completely uncounted. A constant thorn in Momo's side. Look at that. Yeah. And he can't get close to it because he has to, like, fight his way through half of Jesselin's army to get to it. Yeah. Now the mod is down, he's got even less of a chance. Enemy near yeah. Point. I mean, that's why pack 40s are good, you know? Pack 40s could arguably get a little bit close, maybe to the poppy field, and shoot through the hedgerow, which is a, an option. He's going for the Radiant in upgrade in 2-1. Contact! Contact! So he wants a bit of reconnaissance. Oh, he cancelled it. He cancelled it. Interesting. Except we got a lot of mines up north here. I see. Is that what he's been using his munitions on? Is it with the coastals? Wow, yes, I see that now. There's many. It's a little minefield there. He's clearly expecting Jesslin to make a big push, and he might then hope to, like, once Jesslin, like, charges in, blows his stuff up, he can then push elsewhere. And we got the Hellcat for Jesslin. Munitions wise, Jesulin has gotten closer to getting the carpet bombing run. He does have supply drop as an option, should he want to get there. So now he has the Hellcat and the Bulldozer and three triple bar veteran rifle squads. Maybe he could do an all in push. Not unlikely. And one with another Marder. Ah, there's a oh good wise. Yes, the engineers are down. The Verbals are getting deep in there, and they're making use of this pre-Hellcat time. Because the Hellcat, of course, could be chasing them down right now, and it will be soon. Yeah, that's going to make Momo's tactics with the Vibbons much tougher to actually pull off. Obviously lost his 2-1 that he built. Um, it's alright, it's in the north. And now we got the Hellcat racing for those Vibbins, using its uh, ability there. Yeah, we do have Jaeger's Shreks there to help out, though. Well timed by Momo on the defense. And we got the veteran's vulnerability to activate as well there. That's a good win. Can he get it, though? Hellcat's going around the northern flank of that house. Jaeger's changing direction. Anybody on the, ret ver the retreat path doesn't seem like it. Oh, that was so close. really was. All of a sudden. Oh, he's rushing in the Marder. Oh, it's going to be right from the anti-tank gun. Not another one. And carbon bombing on the cutoff point to keep Momo from actually getting it. Oh, he needs to get the Marder away. Oh, dear. Oh, ho, ho, there you go. <laughs> another tree goes down. And also the Marder, but mostly that tree. Yeah, direct hit on the compartment. I'm loving it. Forcing Momo to replace it. I think you're best going sideways when you get carpet bombed, aren't you? Yeah. I don't know why he went, like, backwards there. <laughs> I mean, he's rebuilding the mortar immediately. He keeps losing it and rebuilding it. He's at 64 pop cap. Jezulin's at 57. Still, he's managed to get some control of the map back, partly thanks to those double vehicle wins. Rifles down! Vet 2 rifle down! Bulldozer couldn't save him. Momo is on the comeback trail, surprisingly. He's clawing his way back like a sloth. Yeah. Fell out of the tree. Oh, 2-2-1 two, two, hits a mine. AT gun finishes him off. Kaboom. Down it goes. Yeah, still kicking. Got victory point in the north, firmly in Momo. Oh, hand. Just, just realized Momo doesn't have like any healing in his face. Not a medic bunker or the medical station upgrade. Doesn't need it. He's got the DDL. Yeah, it does everything. Right, 
It repairs, it heals, it gives defensive bonuses, it slowly rotates, it does everything. I don't know why they decided to ever do all of that. It just feels silly. Much. That's it needs a rework. Yeah. In my opinion, it should be a little bit more like for the fatherland, like you click it on a point and it lasts for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lower it to 45 munitions and make it last a minute. That's the way to balance it. But what do I know? Indeed. <laughs> uh, for those of you playing the Imperial Dane drinking game in chat, uh, rest in peace. I don't think they're going to rest peacefully, that's for sure. <laughs> Not with alcohol poisoning. True. Coastals could die there, but no, the Vetsu Rifles couldn't finish them off in time. A lot of health damage done there. They're going to have to go back to base, then to the DDL, as uh, Dane mentioned earlier. But they actually sent him down there with heavy damage, so that's kind of like a point out. He needed something in his base to heal because he just sent them in there like a third of the health total down south. Only five kills on the bulldozer. That is disappointing. Yeah, he hasn't been as aggressive with it as he could have been. And that is Jezulin's biggest weakness. He's very aggressive in the early to mid. When he gets when he gets into the mid to late, he gets really kind of hesitant and a little bit too cautious. Gone's aircraft raising in. Good chance of getting shot down. There we go. Massive explosion because for some reason these are packed with dynamite. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. They've got enough air fuel to get to Tokyo, apparently. Two Hellcats going south. Verbal Vins are exposed. The Marders are going to have to turn to save them. It's not the best ambush I've ever seen. The Hellcats could clear up here. Or will they? Brum the, not Brum Barrett, the Bulldozer's going north. One Verbal's already down. And yeah, just a nice pickup for Jezulin. He's going to back up now, knowing he got the best of that. And yeah, took no real damage from that, actually. Ooh, double Marders and Shreks up against the Bulldozer, but you'll be fine. Strider Footy in chat says, needs that Pack 40. I absolutely agree. I actually feel it's meta in high level to side tech to Panzer Grenadier Company, at least at some point. Nebelwerfers, Pack 40s. Yeah, that's also typically to see. And now we got another Biblin for Momo. Ooh, nice dodge of the bulldozer. The Marders are trying to keep it at bay. What's the next vehicle for Momo we're seeing there? It's another Verbal. Okay, just to replace his losses. Almost losing his Jaegers there, though. Really pushing his luck. He's staying in the game. He's on double-digit victory points, but he's uh, still in there, Dane. Yes, he is. He's a fighter for sure. Well, Jezulin's going for another bulldozer. He's obviously only got the two rifles left, meaning his capping potential isn't what it once was. He could do with laying some smoke on the center, I feel. Yeah, but he also has two pathfinders, so he still has plenty of capping potential, to be honest. For those of you that wonder why I flip from the uh, casting UI to the this UI halfway through the game, it's because the unit icons start to cover too much of the top of the screen. So it's much easier to see what's going on if you flip back to the old one. Hopefully they put the UI at the bottom of the screen where it belongs. Here come the Hellcats in south of the house there, taking out yet another verbal bin. The Marders cannot stop these Hellcat incursions, can they? No, and he's not mining around there either. That would have like, been an idea as well. He's just constantly focusing the north fuel there, and he's just ignoring the rest of the map that way. Jessalyn does not have a single um, infantry uh, group training ability. Ooh. Mine went off under his men's feet up north. Ooh. Yep, coastals survive. Pathfinders die in the center. That's a, a small win there for Momo. Yep, Pathfinders could actually win this battle against Coastals in the south. Has to be careful. Momo has to be careful. He's got bigger fish to fry, though, in the center. He's trying to defend his position with the airburst shells from the mortar pit. And we got another vehicle vent here for Momo.
just brutal casualties here from those Shermans. Right, here's a reconnaissance overflight. Maybe you'll get the information he needs. Yep, he's mustering the tanks. He's got two bulldozers from the northern direction. Two Hellcats going straight through the center. They see the position of the mod as they're going for the killing blows here. One hits a mine, however. Well, that's not going to matter. One mod is going to go down very fast, and the second one's going to be enough against two Hellcats. There you go, GG. Well played, as ever. Wait for the Jaegers to be a little bit weak, but they were just strong enough to take out one of them. Here come the Bulldozers to finish the job on the Jaegers. Oh, and a mine. Yup. I don't see uh, Mormon winning this anymore. No. Yes, and just holds all the cards. And has killed all the Germans. More or less, more or less. There you go, GG well played for Momo. GG well played indeed. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, there's the replay length. I didn't realise that you could show that by accident. Okay, my bad. Wow, they really have made the replay length very uh, spoilerable in um, this UI. I've only just really actually acknowledged that. Because it even shows the time of the replay in the UI. Oh dear, oh dear. I've got to... Oh, for God's sake. Got something to be mindful of there. Thank you for pointing that out in chat. But I wanted to draw your attention to the stats where we'll have a look at them now. Uh, Momo 147 to 129. Um, what else have we got? See all the infantry that was built and lost. See how much bigger the US Army was throughout that. And there's the Army Valley of Jeslin just surging ahead. Although, to be fair, Momo did well to get back into it, Dane. He did well. He did. He sort of steadily around sort of mid-game came back, but just... He lacked some more steps, like, you know, actually winning the match. He's just basically staying afloat. Hmm, definitely. So, um, let's... Let's get ready to have a look at the next replay, which I do have. I can confirm. Ruby. <laughs> Some good ones from Hulk and Dexen as well. Uh, those are really decent replay lengths, so maybe we could get onto them afterwards. Of course, if you were wondering how the brackets work today, uh, let's have a little look if this can. I don't think this contains any spoilers, so let's have a little look together now. All of the spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've got Orange Pest Alpern later. That's going to be pretty good. Wow, wowza. I'm very excited about that one. Um, what else have we got? Ray's already through against Daniel D. No surprises there. Ah, balls. Stern Panther starting to assemble his 4v4 teams. <laughs> Something he's very, very excited about. Um, yeah, and the series we're casting, Jezreel and Momo, the winner of that faces Ray afterward. So that could be decent. Jezreel versus Ray, especially, would be pretty exciting. Yeah. Orange Pest versus Elpern is always a good series, a good Swedish rivalry there. I'm very excited to see who could possibly be in this um, 4v4 later. Uh, well, I'll be casting the 4v4 later, Gunther. So I'm looking forward to that. Of course we cast the 4v4. Yep, I'm gonna... so it's impossible to block that timer, guys. It just means I've got to be really careful. Because one thing that you have to worry about now is um, if you want to see the stats, the only way of the individual units, the only way to do that is to do that, is to expand the, the everything. So if I want a floating element, I'm going to need that floating element there at all times. So then I can't hide this bar at any point. It's 
And I don't want to get spoiled either. So, yeah, I know caster mode disables the timer, but then then I have to... Uh, yeah, it should do. That That would be great if it did that. You, you bang on, mate. Um, but I do need to expand this to have a look at the commanders and show them on screen and stuff. Um, so I'm in a bit of a pickle there, really. I can't look at units killed without expanding it. Maybe just have your face above it? <laughs> oh, that is bad, man. That is bad. Uh, I mean, we know your face is bad, but it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like an option. That is that is tricky, because you know the exact second the game ends. It's not like Co. 1, where it just kind of was a bore. Tell the chat to close their eyes. That's really funny, Nath. Yeah. Everybody close your eyes. I'm opening the bar. I want to see how many kills this unit has. Okay. It has 17. The bar is closed. You can open your eyes again. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about that. Oh, well. Okay, so let's load up the second replay and send it to Dana Renio. You only send it to me. I've loaded it up in five seconds. Yeah, I think I forgot to send it to myself, to be honest. Ah, tricky. <laughs> yeah, forgot to put it in my own playbacks folder. There we go. I've done that now. Ruby. <laughs> right then, it's Jezulin's turn. To play Vermat. Momo. Ah! Let's go for a bit of a surprise faction. So uh, let's get it on. It wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Hello there and welcome to Game 2. Welcome to Momo for Show's British Forces. That's right, you heard me um, clearly there. And he's up against Jezulin playing as Coastal Faction in the South. Dane... How do you think the Brits are going to do here on Feyman? That's going to be interesting. I mean, if they go hard sappers, maybe they can do some uh, nasty stuff. I mean, it all depends on the battle groups. I mean, heavy armor's been getting a lot more popular so late, but there's still air and sea there. Even if the centaur got nerfed, the open strat is still fairly popular. So, you can still execute that. This is Jesslyn. Just had to show the game panel there for a second, guys. So I stopped the game for a moment. There we go. We didn't get spoiled by the game length. <laughs> Lovely stuff. We've got the two Royal Engineers in the north with the Vickers. So similar build order to what we saw Havoc use earlier. And of course, just same old Coastal Reserves from Vermatt. We're going to be seeing a lot of them this tournament, and that's for certain. One thing I'm worth pointing out, he's actually... Jesslyn laid up, like, a lot of sandbags towards the fuel pond. Like, he's laid them up using, you know, light cover in several positions, creating sort of footholds yeah. ahead of time. Dude, I really like that. That is strong. It's very uh, it's very realistic of him. He's doing that, and then, of course, he's putting the barbed wire straight away after. I'm sure these pioneers are going to start spooling that very certain, very soon. There you go. Momo's making push for the northern fuel here, and Jesslyn's been caught out of cover. Almost got the Kuzla served there already. And we got Jesslyn with a very similar build order to Momo so far. Two Pioneers, two Kuzla service, and the MG42. Yeah, it's a pretty strong, pretty standard build order. Both teams have an, an MG, which is, of course, 
pretty much going to be great on Fame. And Vilsic a wide open map. If you can get your MG set up in a strong position, you can do well. But you do have to protect its flanks, of course. Indeed, and you do have to be mindful of mortars, potentially. Another section for Momo. Bring in a more good old-fashioned in from sections from Old Blighty to deal with the Germans. Yeah, they've taken the King's Shilling, and now they're in a bit of a predicament. All right, Momo's Vic is going to reset up there. He's seen the coastal now. And yeah, I'm expecting a mortar of some kind in this game. We haven't had a choice from Momo yet, but maybe he'll go for... Um, does he have Indian artillery? Yes, he does. There's an option. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're more British battle groups at the moment, so it's not like it can't be an option. <laughs> yeah, th to be fair, they're all pretty good at the moment. British... Uh, have a lot of good battle groups, of course, with the heavy armoured being the most popular at the moment. Indeed. And there we go. We do get Indian artillery. And it looks like... Speak of the devil. And he's chosen the 4.2-inch heavy mortar as well. So, yeah, that's, that's a decent shout there. Looking at a Pulsen truck as well. Yeah, of course. Get the Pulsen backing up into Jesuit, giving him all kinds of problems. And Jesslyn, to the surprise of very few people, is going for the Luftwaffe Company. Ah, don't even have to mention it, do we? We can have the same cookie-cutter Wehrmacht build order. I just hope we see more DAC this tournament, because DAC with the new Panzer, Panzer Jaegers, sorry, um, are pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, they, they managed to like, have an actual higher win rate than the Wehrmacht before, you know, the recent hard fix. There they are. Indians in the back of the half the, the, the truck coming to do the, yep, the pheasant, as it was called. <laughs> really? It's a Canadian truck. Oh, nice. So it's a very uh, cute looking truck, isn't it? And here we go. Yeah. With this little porty gun there being added. Oh, yeah, it's got the Pulsen as well. So 4.2 inch mortar and Pulsen. And what a power spike for Jesse Lynn. That's going to be flare lights the way. We got a black 30 off of Jesse Lynn first, then the 2 to 1. Interesting choice there. Yeah, fighting fire with fire. Flak 30 versus the Bofors on the back of that Pulsen. I think uh, Momo wishes that was a Bofors and that Pulsen, uh, uh, Pheasant. Is it not a Bofors? No, it's a Polson. The gun is oh, the Polson. Oh, the, the gun's called the Polson. My the mind. It's a, the... it's a massive gun yeah. as well, isn't it? Have you seen the size of that magazine? It's a pretty big magazine, yeah. I just assumed it was a Bofors, my bad. I thought the, the, like the truck... Oh, yeah, that makes more sense now. The Polson conversion. Thank you for educating me, Dane. Inform, yeah. terrorise, educate. Imperial Dane. Pretty much. <laughs> right, two two ones going in. Holston gun is fighting him. He's being pretty aggressive with that two to one there. Jessen is fearless. Certainly is. Alright, what's that back in base? We do have platoon down now for Momo. We'll have to see what he goes for there. Good infirmary. Getting out some healing for the boys. Vala chosen. Giving a range of uh, abilities when it's active. It's a quite handy ability. What a shot from the 4.2 inch there. Postals falls back almost immediately. Yeah, they narrowly survived there being annihilated. We do have the DDL as an option now for Chesley. Maybe he'll put it down on his cutoff here. Not unlikely. Who may, you know, do what Momo did and go put on the fuel. We're back to full strength. Everybody needs cover. Even Stand by delayed, Commander. Right, Jaegers coming up next for Jesselin. Munitions-wise, he's sitting pretty. He should be fine. Yeah. Interesting enough, he hasn't upgraded the armored car, so I guess he wants it as an option, but isn't willing to commit yet. Northern Point T being grabbed back by the Coastals. The old CGS is just focusing more on the south now here. Yeah, he's 
doing well. He's getting behind heavy cover now as well. Jason's looking to steady the ship here. He's getting some mines down as well. Jaeger is getting the Shrek, so that's going to try and find the pole. Somebody instead finds the Vickers. Look at that. Two going into tank. base. Yep. Got them heavy mauled in its sights. Almost had the put, uh, truck there with the Jaegers. Vickers going to keep swiveling. It can't quite find its target. Finally does. And the Jaegers are going to get forced away. Meanwhile, in the center, Pioneers go forward with low health. They need to be careful. Pretty risky there. Guess he might not be quite realizing what he's doing with them. And there's the pulse and forcing them away. And the 4.2 inch doing a lot of damage. Pioneers do not survive. I told you you needed to be careful. Yeah, and we've got Gurkhas out there for Momo with the Bren gun on the way. Yeah, the Mortar's doing some serious work. I can't figure out how many... Dane, can you tell me how, how many kills the Mortar has, please, sir? Kills. Ten kills so far. And with Veterans 1, I can also fire its air burst barrage. Wow, there we go. I found a use for co-casters. Not only do they help AE's strained larynx, um, they also find out the kills. Great stuff. Colton Track, meanwhile, with nine kills. Very handy. Uh, this pioneer got also needs to be careful. Many pioneers are going to die in the making of this tournament, I feel. They usually do. Very likely. Jessen's going for the support elements, slightly going to push for the event. And we got training there for Momo. Now it's going to make his troops tougher, which in particular is going to be great with the Gurkhas, obviously. That's only going to make things tough here for Jessalyn. Ultra Trucks needing it south here. We also got the Momo hitting the fuel point right south here of Jessalyn's base. Only adding to the indignity of the current battlefield situation. A raw moment just squeezing Jesslyn here like a ripe Spanish pear. I don't know if <laughs> Spanish pears are a thing. I they are, they are. are now, Dane, I'm sure. I'm sure that there is a pear in Spain that's very crushable. And that's Jesslyn right now. Momo Indeed. has been caught out. 221 is going to go through the centre now on a merry voyage of discovery. Finds the Vickers. There's no anti tank as such. There is a boys' AT uh, rifle squad, but. He isn't quite there, he is. Now he's in the picture. Yep. And we got the Vibrin right around the corner here for Jessalyn. Oh, there you go. Flak taken down by the 4.2 inch mortar. And more shots to come. Could get wiped a second time at this rate. Yeah, he's desperately trying to get that flak further to safety before it gets polarized. Caught a bunch of Momo's units caught in a bit of a pinch so there with the machine gun there raking them in hot fire and we got the Vibla now arriving. Yeah, put a lot of the an option for Jesslyn, but he's yet to pick him. No, he's just having enough fun as it is with the army he's got as it stands. He's having a great resurgence here, pun intended. He's taken out the heavy mortar as well. That's a big pickup, Dane. If he can destroy the gun, it's going to be. The problem is, of course, on the armoured car went down to mine. It did indeed. There we go. Armoured car down. That's the problem with not leading first with your pioneers with the minesweeper. He doesn't even have minesweepers. Oh, is he going to try and make off of the heavy mortar instead of destroying it? Yeah. He is. But you have to push it manually and the Gurkhas are there. Yeah, I think that was uh, Jess and they're getting just a bit too greedy. No, he's lost vital manpower there, but he has got this MG. Maybe he could turn it to face the uh, the mortar and stop his opponent recapturing it. Going to be his best bet because the insect rifles are thinking away the, the Vibravind. 
Yeah, we go. Good suppression coming down. Needs to suppress the Royal Engineers next. There we go. Crowd suppression kicks in. And there we go. We got Volunteer from the chat for Momo. That's a big boost for him, value-wise. 25% less manpower for every reinforce is a huge boost to your economy. It is, especially in the elite infantry like the Gorkas. Just can't Ooh, get and that. He and he just withdrew the uh, Poulton truck. Oh, wow. And we got the newly buffed Veterans 1 ability in the MD4 to active. Yeah, Vic suppresses everything. Verbal's going back in. He's up against a heavy cover position, though, but the flak's going to help out as well. Surely be able to tear through this boy's squad. Well, the MD42 would be able to help if it could see it, but he can't. There's some shrubbery in the way. There's some great work by the Verbal. Maybe he'll make a dive for the mortar now. Yep, Coastals are out of suppression. There they go. They're off there. Bellies now, Ooh. they could go for the mortar. What the do? He could actually lay down smoke with the Jaegers while the Coastals then make off for the heavy mortar. And destroy the Vickers. Couldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, he failed to lay down the smoke there, which he needed to do. Now he's got the flank first. Well, the Momo's just pinned inside his base right now, but he is going for the Matilda 2. Which is definitely going to be a bit of a headache here for Jesslyn. As I find the Matilda who tends to hard counter Jaegers quite well. Ah, Pioneers are finally going to try for the mortar. Can they get away? No! That's the third attempt to steal that he's had. Yes, and just refused to deploy any smoke to cover anyone trying to make off of it. In the end, go Matilda strikes through there. Come back on. Yes, and quick responding with a Marta free here as the Matilda 2 sails through his lines. Bounced a shot there. Jaegers on the flank. And now Momo is going to try and make off for the heavy mortar. I'm going to see Jaegers getting crushed with the Matilda 2. Finally gets his own mortar back. That's been a long time. It's been a hot potato. MG42 was wiped. Yeah, Matilda 2 is like just crazy good versus anything that isn't a tank. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, it is an infantry tank, Dave. It's in the name. Indeed, indeed, it's meant to support them. That's why it's so slow and it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's not really meant to like, outpace the infantry. Seven miles per hour. And then there's the Matilda 1, which is like even slower. Yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Well, there's technically a lot of British tanks you don't talk about. <laughs> yeah, the Brits made a lot of different tanks in the Second World War. Half of them were terrible, half of them were pretty decent. And some of them were pretty much lethal for the crews. I think there's like one, I can't remember which one was like, you know, if you got stuck, they'd have to like saw your leg off. Oh no. It's not very good, is it? Meanwhile, verbal mod is going in. Trying to keep got this. the foot guards away there for Momo. Oh, that will help. Foot guards, of course, are very good. They are. They will soon be on standby. We got more Jaegers for Jesslyn, which I feel like versus the Matildas is a bit of a trap. Especially when you've got 80 fuel. You know, he could have gone for another Marder, perhaps. Yeah. We could have side tech for pack 40, though. There's the Matilda, that seems going to struggle. Jaegers pushing from that northern victim. We got the foot guards nearby. More Jaegers on their way. Foot guards lurking behind the tree line. Trying to get that first bazooka shot off. Yep, and they already got Veterans 1 thanks to the training. Which currently gives 1,300 XP at the moment, according to Nathan Chat. Yeah. Which they're not supposed to get, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh dear. But God's heading immense damage to the Beaver Bin. And the Yeegs are getting pulverized there by the Gurkhas in the center. 
Yeah, he goes Jessalyn is flank. finding his... Yeah, Jessalyn's trying to find an angle here on the Matilda. He's coming from the northern direction there. He's always looking for an angle, mate. That's what you've got to do on Feynmanville. It's a rather linear map unless you're using the outer reaches to find a flank. And here we go. Oh, yeah. man, Dane was right. The Matilda just eats those y Shreks and eats up your manpower. It very much does. There we go. The mana scores a hit. We'll have to see what Jessen goes for next. I'm guessing another martyr though in response to the Matildas. Mine's laid in the south here from the Royal Engineers. They're gonna Yep, they need to move. There we go. A lot of mines actually. Yeah. Been a bit of a busy bee there. It's now laying a fifth fifth mine now in the south. Up and over. Just like you try with the last to have it. This uh, poor Indeed. coastal squad's in for it, isn't he? As soon as he moves them an inch. And there's like so many mines he actually managed to somehow dodge already. Alright, foot guards and boys have strong, heavy cover positions in the north. There's nothing Jezulin can do about that. Not without some heavier support. Which is underway from the Beaver Wind. That should help that too. We'll have to see what Momo goes for next. I'm kind of expecting more Matildas. Got an artillery officer um, for Jessalyn is his next choice. Interesting. I mean, it's not a bad pick, obviously, but... Versus Matildas, he may not quite be what he's looking for, then. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the best build order against what he's up against, because support weapon-wise, he is up against only two. There's not any AT guns. Indeed not. That's like one pair of moments, like surprisingly, like just lacking his anti-tank guns. All right, Royal Engineers continuing to uh, plant as many mines as they can muster. Egg is moving forward, but they're in a all oh, directed from the mortar. Yep, that was not pretty. Right, Verbal Vind in the centre now. Matilda's fighting back. It's got another one to join it. So the dynamics are very strange in this. Oh, that was a big shot. Yep, got the MU-42 there with the artillery officer. And we got the Gurkhas trying to make off with it again. Well, they're in the circle. Yep, just need the officers to sort of hit there, the Italian mortars. The Italians actually had a bit of a funny mortar in the war, sort of 50mm mortar where, like, it actually had a magazine that could, like, you know, fire relatively fast. The Italians didn't have some have that many bad ideas, it's just how they used them and how they were commanded to use them. But they're actually Well, they had some good ideas, they made, made really good submachine guns, yeah. they made pretty good artillery, but tank-wise, they just didn't have the industry for it. Right then. They also didn't train the crews, so that's another thing. Yeah, true. A lack of training was a, a big problem for a lot of the Italian army. Unfortunately for them. Ooh, those foot guards, though. I soon going to be footless guards at this rate. Ah. Verbal forcing them away. Meanwhile, in the south, we've got uh, Matilda crushing through the foliage, making the map even more open. Absolutely, we got grenades from Momo as well there. Mm, might have a first candidate, the seven man coastal could get grenaded. Yeah. I'm gonna hit a big hit by a rival grenade there. Which in the case of the British, I believe was just a grenade on a stick. I'm sure it was. I bet it worked though. No, I mean, the Americans worked on the same principle. It's just a Mark II frag grenade on a stick. You just had to remember to pull the pin before firing it. Right, Matilda's been surrounded. Three Shreks now. It's also been Fausted. Got the boys AT trying to help out, but the Verbal's got him in his sights as well. 
Matilda's so low on health. The three Jaeger Shreks need to catch up with them, though, because the Verbal could die here. Yeah, it's going to go down. Yeah, boys AT could die as well, though. There they, they, they go. They did go down. But can he get the Matilda? That's going to be the big question, Ian. Looks like the answer to that is going to be a resounding nine. Nine, indeed. Because... He could actually use a loser Jaeger here. The Gurk has got him. There's the artillery officer. There's a Morder down a Matilda flank from the south. Dem he's got a damaged engine. Oh, he's going to lose the Jaegers up north, though. He kept up, still trying to push the Matilda. Now go GG from Jessalyn. Wow. Just pushed too hard. Yeah, he was so close, but... He was kind of just playing into, like, you know, Mama's jaws there. His sloth-like jaws. Well, Brits get the win. That was unexpected, based on the um, kind of doom people had after the hotfix. Oh, you know, people like to doom talk about a lot of things. <laughs> All right, excellent push. Great, uh, great push in from MoMA from multiple directions. Great attack. And we'll be back with the deciding ace game. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for watching.
wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Hello there and welcome to game three of the first round of the Resurgence Cup. Welcome to Momo for Show's British Forces. He's north on road to Tunis. And of course, welcome to designating the defensive line. It's Jezulin. Danny boy, who's going to win this one? Well, if we sort of look at how things have gone so far and what faction Momo was picked, it's likely the British are going to take off for the win here because... So and that's the feel like so far that the Amak's having a great time, despite the uh, hot fix. I just like the fact we've got Brits back, Dane. I mean, it's nice that Brits are getting chosen. I mean, uh, we all it would, is. we all agree that Vermat need a bit of work to uh, make them fully viable. A few little tweaks. Uh, the thing is, it's not like they need anything major. Is it? They just need a few balanced tweaks in their favour. Would you say, Dane? Yeah, I think there's some tricks needed here there, but I also just think like, you know, light vehicles need to be a little less imposing because it's really just like the major stumble block for the round was just light vehicles. Yeah. But also it's it is nice to have Brits as a thing, and it's also nice to have Dak having some interesting nerfs and interesting buffs. So I'm I'm excited to see when Dak finally get used in this tournament. Maybe <laughs> later with Orange Pest versus Elpern we could see Orange Pest oh. use Dak, that would be good. That's definitely some good potential there. A lot more people going for Dak lately, and a lot of Panzerjägers out of them. Yeah, they fire very quickly now. They've had massive buffs to their aim to fire time. Um, anyway, back to Rotatunis. The first person to take the house. Wow, what a strong taking of the house that is. Vickers is straight in there, Dane. He is not messing about. Yeah, very bold. Very much anticipating that, of course, Jason's going to come waltzing up then, and of course, immediately get, proceeds to get like hit with infinite fire. Within the house, Dane, I've got one Vickers crew member staring at the corner, the other sitting on his bottom like a child staring at the wall. It's not the most uh, well trained Vickers crew I've ever seen. I mean, I'm sure they've been well trained for British standards. <laughs> they're playing Monopoly or something in there. I don't know what they're doing. Okay. Got Jason with the MD footage as well, now on the way. Yep. That's a good map for it. And we all know where the defensive line's going to be designated. It's going to be on this cutoff later, so Jessilin's already protecting these points. He's already starting to build his fortress. It also feels like iron uh, Momo's field point there. He's already got like a cursor reserve squad like poking at it, almost like you can just stare at it. Almost taste the fuel, which we really shouldn't do, by the way. It smells nice, though. Surely it tastes nice. It's not good for your health. Oh. Unless you're a car. Anyway, uh, Momo's got another infantry section now. Um, he's building up a nice army. We've had no kills yet. It's a pacifist game. Who's going to be the first person to die? Looks to be an Englishman at this rate, though. Catching fire there from the Italians in the house with the Carcano bolt action rifles. Oh, no. Not Terry. What are the Carcano bolt action rifles, did you say? Yeah, Carcano bolt action rifles. They were basically, even not in initially what they're meant to be equipped with, they were initially be equipped with like a larger caliber round. Yeah, they But were weird. due to logistical issues, they uh, kind of went for like, it just, what was essentially meant to be like a rear astron rifle in the end for the. Mainline yeah, front line so troops. Skinny and so long. Doesn't look like one of the carbines that the most militaries were using by at least like yeah, 1941 was... 42. Pretty much what it was. And it was fine, like, you know, a smaller round than most other arms were using. They were using 8mm. The challenge was using 6.5mm. Oh, yeah. I, I'd just tank one of them. I wouldn't even notice them. Somebody shot me with only that size bullet, of course. Anyway, we've got uh, Jezulin. Building a flak 30 next. Once more, pretty much repeating his build order from the last match perfectly. Yeah. Momo, though, is not doing what he did so far quite last last, but we're not seeing like a fast home mortar out there of Indian artillery. Not as of yet, but uh, he's got many choices, of course. He could go for armoured on this 
map. It's a good yeah. one for it. But also go here and see battle group. I've seen plenty of players go for that. And then they use the medical station to cover that cutoff point. And then of course get the naval bombardment for the late game. Good against these uh, de de defensive lines. Yep. Got the Humber on the way there for Momo. Great map for it. And we got the two to one there for Jessalyn. Yeah. MG42 already gravitating around the point. It's probably going to be around for a large portion of this game. What Momo's got to ask himself is can he keep Jessalyn away from the central victory point? Because we all know how the Wehrmacht play is going to play now. Can he keep him away from the central victory point? And can he cause enough fatalities um, to the Wehrmacht army? Well, that shouldn't be too difficult now with the Hamburg. He has, in fact, gone here for NC Battle Group. Air and sea, wow. With supply surplus being the first one chosen. Yep, kind of like to set up that uh, field infirmary there on the cutoff. Or somewhere else. Oh, setting up in the space. Okay, I was expecting, you know, set up fresh <laughs> movement. Momo there clearly deceiving not only his opponent, but me. They can be a cunning player to watch out for him. Sloths. Yeah, sloths are cunning beasts. They just take a long time to deceive you. Very long. <laughs> All right, the uh, Royal Engineers are marching forward in the south. Seems that Momo's had most of the map, but not too much of it. He's just had a, f a bit more munition time in the center, and now he's uh, pushing elsewhere. And we got the Panzerbüchse up on the 2 to 1. I love this uh, 2 to 1 Panzerbüchse. Seems so interesting, isn't it, to have like a casemate style weapon in, in the early game that's ultra light. I can't think of a single vehicle we've had like that in Company Heroes history. Well, the closest would have been the anti tank half track for Panzer oh, Elite. Yes. yes, indeed. You mean the anti infantry anti tank half track that was used to kill infantry? Yeah. <laughs> right then. Vickers has been redeployed, but uh, that means Jesslin now has the Casbar, and he's firing from its turrets. Ooh. Good shot on the Humber. Yeah. Much fiercer fighting now, though. Much fiercer. Yeah, it's picking and up. Us. And we got the six-pounder gun away there for more. We also got the officer already up for Jesslin. Causing some issues. That's why Momo's had to vacate the premises. Just the presence of the officer and what he can deliver is enough to make you completely reposition your army. And it's not pizza he's delivering. No. It's Sky Pizza. That's an interesting euphemism for mortar fire, but. Is it a mortar, would you say? It seems to be like the. Arty from the clouds. I don't quite understand how it works, to be quite frank. The captain's definitely immortal. I always say captain's mortar. I hope I'm right in that sense. Well, who knows? In the south, we've got the sappers creeping about there. Yeah, they're going to creep about a lot more close to Jessalyn's army soon enough. May as well take a flamethrower, to be honest, and try and flank in some way. Yeah, though he's a bit short on munitions for it. Maybe going towards uh, Bren guns and anti-tank rifles. Bren guns are in vogue again. Had a buff for the last two patches now in terms of cost and now their usability. Indeed. Got the same thing mauled by the MU-42. Could try and pop the veterans one able to deal with the hammer with the MD42 there. I oh, did actually pop it. Oh, there's a big shot from the six pounder and finished off by the boys AT. 2 2 1 down. 2 2 1, very down. And we got the Viva in there for Jesslin. Very shortly. MD42 there, shredding in the Humber slowly. A very large block of cheese. <laughs> Infantry training coming out next for Momo. Going to get that spike of veterancy across his entire infantry army. 
Yeah, he's also, I think, saving up for the centaur there. Like, I was running why I didn't go for commandos yet, but he's clearly going to, like, try and hit uh, Jessen with a fast centaur. Yeah, that's a good weapon. Raw Marine centaur. Can do a lot of work. Indeed, especially since Jessen doesn't have a lot of anti-tank weapons. Pinned down in the north and forced away. Jesslin lacking in 80, certainly not lacking in anti-infantry. He's pushing straight through the centaur. The centaur, sorry, it's the centaur that's coming. <laughs> yeah. Centaur. I mean, I imagine Jesslin would like to push through the centaur as well, but... I'm not entirely sure that's going to happen. But he's going there for the machine gun right in the fuel pump. Got the six pounder gun providing excellent covering fire here. Can't fire through rocks, though, and the Verbal Vin knows that. It's going to go north now to get away, so the boys AT are going to go and try and find him. For, sir. First Jaeger squad right around the corner here for Jessalyn. And we got the cutoff towards the south of being hit here with the coastal yeah, serve. Right, the coastal pushing down south. Jeslin's trying to pivot. He hasn't set up a. a des oh, he has set up a DDL. My bad. It's on the cutoff. It's just we haven't seen that much fighting around it quite yet. No, Jeslin's been very aggressive, keeping like the focus very close to normal space. It hasn't really been relevant, which is good. I'm sick of seeing uh, constant fighting around that. It's now Momo who's designated his own defensive line, and it's his base. Indeed, we got a bit of fire there on the sappers. Yeah, I thought they were outside the circle, to be honest, but uh, the game didn't think so. Yeah, it can be a bit uh, wishy-washy with those uh, delineations. Oh, how about diving in? We got the eggs. Oh, yep, the eggs could finish it off. And the artillery, actually, nearly. Really close, but now you have a go centre out. We'll have to see if Momo's going to go for a full Alpern here and just keep churning them out. <laughs> yeah, Alpern, if you didn't know, has been on a crusade ever since the game came out to try and prove that oh, um, fall-ins are overpowered. He's done a pretty decent job of it as well. Oh, got button there by the flag 30. Trying to see if he can't finish it off here. Artillery. Oh, there's a lot in that circle, but the, fortunately for him, the artillery officer did not stand his ground. Oh, they call in very good coordinates. Oops, absolutely, they could. Oh, never mind. He's repositioned the flank 30 just at the wrong time. All right, time. All right. Coastal City Mine it's... in the south, taking the plus 10 fuel down there. It's all Jesulin at the moment. Yeah, he's got most of the map now. He's got all the victory points. Compared to like the previous match, this is a significant uh, difference. Yeah, maps matter. Brits are a lot better on Feynmanville than they are on Road to Tunis. So this uh, game so far is heavily in Wehrmacht's favour. Because, of course, it does help be on this map. Probably also helps that just Jesslin got like a feel for Momo's uh, Brits here. I think that might also have been a bit why he was a bit hesitant in the previous match. He wasn't entirely sure what Momo's going to do. through the center but what what does he have that can help him the centaur's fixed now oh, i mean that's great but what can it do against the jaegers who are going to be waiting for it well if he's clever he could like just try and remove everything but the jaegers and then let like, the infantry deal with that but oh nice first that was a decent hit. yeah that could help him follow-up could be good as well Black 30 is doing a lot of work in the meantime. Suppressing all the supporting troops here, but it crucially is not buttoning up their centaur. That was like the problem last engagement for Momo. Mines replaced in the south, taking out the infantry, and the Flat 30 is in peril. Seems that like Jeshulin has not got the AT dynamics of his army right quite yet. He does have another Shrek on its way. Indeed. And in the south there, mine goes off on the sappers, sapping them. 
Yeah, sapping them of their strength, and absolutely. We do have a Minesweeper in the center, but that's obviously far from where the problems are. Indeed. Six Panagon there for Momo, number two. Like he's going to swing high in towards the southern sappers, then clear them up with his Vibelvins. Yeah, they can have a good crack at it as well. That's a torrid retreat path for the Royal Engineers. For but sure. They're about to get hot fixed by Verbalvins. Yeah, they're going to have to glue them together back in hell. Also, been quite aggressive. Calling artillery point blank on the Vickers. Oh wow, and he's holding his ground as well. That's a an MLG move by the wizard. People in swinging hard north gonna go for that humble. We got a second center as of course Momo goes further and further into Alpen territory. Well, you don't want to go to Sweden. I mean, at this rate, he's probably going to just get, like, a Swedish passport handed to him. <laughs> Double call-in vehicles in the centre with Brent support. He thinks better of it, though. Wants to get fully repaired. Doesn't want to push in right now. But, to be honest, he's probably made the right decision. We do have a Jaeger in the designated defensive line. <laughs> One more day, also got the naval bombardment light up. He's a bit shot on the munitions to call it in. We have vehicles on standby. And just then bring up the murder three as for an M. Yeah, it's a nice option now. I think his army should have everything it needs to keep these tanks off him. In theory, at least. So yeah, it's all up to him to how he plays with it now and calls mines would help he needs to get some of them planted he's been doing well with them in the south but maybe in the center just protect his flanks indeed mines do win wars crusaders or centaurs sorry my bad they're currently pushing everything off the center but he can't Push too deep in because the mod is there now, and that's going to open up right now. Yeah, there we go. Diving in hard here. Jason comes out swinging like a maniac. Oh, in a one more shot. Room. Shrek does not get the kill. How little health. There we go. Finally finishes the job. One centaur's down. Yep. That's going to hurt uh, Momo there, but he might get the Jaegers, and he does. Bren Gunners did the job there. Yeah, don't mess with the Brens. Friends are not your friends. They are not. Good use of the button ability, well noted by Tightrope in chat. Tight yeah, rope. he's been making very good use of the button ability in that fight, 30 for sure. Tightrope will be joining us uh, for casting later on when Imperial Dane's done his shift. Ooh, now got the W. We've been stabbing in, but straight to six pounder gun here. Yes, and it doesn't care. Like a naked man on a buffet, he's just there to get what he wants. Apparently so, and what he wants right now is to take out this centaur. He's also taken out another support weapon there. Jessalyn's pushing hard. He wants he to win, done. and he wants to finish it right now. Momo's been able to take his AT gun back, however. There's that dastardly officer. Meanwhile, Morda's sighting its main gun directly down road to Tunis. Lost the curse from the serve squad though, and the machine's gonna get wiped there. Oh, Morda can get wiped. Well get Down it goes. Lost well the piling defended. up here. Well defended there by Momo. And the anti-tank got wiped here. Offers just calling it in here. Verbal's going in. Oh, that's a push too far from Jezulin. Six pounders facing the right way. Gets it. Wow. Baker's recruit again, but it's lagging it wiped again. Yep, just cleared up with the flag 30. 
no Absolute. idea who's traded up here. Oh, we found Jerry. It's tough to say. When was I hit on vehicle kills, but infantry kills, Jessalyn's definitely leading. Yeah, and Popcap Jessalyn has kind of equalised now. He's going to get the mortar built again. But yeah. Frank Fernie had 15 kills and one in vehicle kill. That was a hockey fight. You know where they just grab each other's jerseys and punch each other in the face? Wasn't I mean, Randy is a Canadian developer, so it makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't too much science about that engagement. Just a lot of things died. Yeah, a lot of tea spilled. Another martyr there for Jesselyn. Yeah, Maybe see sort of the weakness of Momo going full Alpen. Like, he just hasn't teched up, so he kind of lacks, like, you know, a way to, like, you know, find a way forwards now. He doesn't need, like, easy resources for commandos even now. This officer, only a two months gone. Ah, but what do we have now? Jessalyn's finally got his own artillery ability. Sorry, Momo's got his own artillery. It's the naval bombardment. God, I love that one, but I think the timing here for it was a bit uh, off, but seems to have done the trick nonetheless. Kill anything, but it's certainly bought him some time. It kind of says it caused Jessalyn's front line to crumble apart like a house made out of cake. Oh, Morder down there. Boys AT crept up. Six pounders were in position. Nice retaliation for Momo. Is he about to make a resurgence? Find out at 11. <laughs> oh, that's an after hours one, is it? Okay, fair enough. Dexon quickly victors there by heavy German firepower. Send tools good as new now, allegedly. And he's going to push in against the Jaegers that they've uncovered. And going to fire a few more shots there with this little howitzer. Another Vibra in for Jessalyn. Yep, go straight north, keeping the victory point. Situation clamped down hard on Momo. Yeah, he's squeezing him. Like a Californian um, almond? I don't know what they make in California, uh, except they use a lot of Armadillo, water for it. like a Californian armadillo underneath the wheel of a celebrity's Humvee. Alright. I'll do it. I'll do, pig. I mean, a. Hey. Okay. Right then. Jessalyn is indeed a legend. We have many. <laughs> it's not a sad metaphor. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> we have we have the um, officer. Now, veteran C3, meaning his circle's a lot larger. Yeah. I doubt we'll see much of the abilities all has been used, but, you know, everything he does is basically going to be better. Naval bombardment's creeping back up to uh, be off cooldown soon. Some very low res crater splats here. Just look like uh, bra brown paint on the field. Santor's pushing back up. It's ready for fun. But I think Imperial Dane's right. I think Momo's lacking heavy tech. Oh, he's, he's... Ah, look at that. He's requisitioning and refitting the... Uh, oh, Humber. There we go. He managed to tech up, and he isn't going for the Matilda too. Nice. Get the fuel from the Humber. Get tech up now. And that may put him in good stead. Because you know what he needs to build? The M3 Matildas. Lee. No, the M3 Lee. Come on. That's what the tournament's based on. No, it's not on. an American one. Oh. Well, it's a Grant. Grant, yeah. Lee is the American one. Okay. It had a slightly different turn on the Lee. All right, Lee. Churchill. It was Winston Churchill that named all these American tanks originally, if you didn't know. He was sick of everything being M3 or M4 and started naming them after Civil War um, generals, mostly Confederate ones. And then the Americans just decided to stick with it. Yeah. Very influential is our Churchill. Vickers down to the centaur. Now veteran C2. And it is a Matilda. Dane must have seen it building. That's cheating, Dane. Yes, I used my eyes. Shame yes, on me. and your brain and your mouth. Cheating. That's what I'm saying. Meanwhile, centaur under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, 
Oh, we'll try and take out the Casbah with the six pounder. It's unlike the British to destroy priceless civilian artifacts. <clears throat> oh, there we go. They didn't need that anyway. Oh, I tell you what, the Sentinel's in a spot of bother now. The Shreks are coming. He lacks a machine gun to hold them down, though. But oh, there's the Matilda. There we go. That'll take care of them quickly. Ah, Matilda. The Jaeger Shrek's mortal enemy. Squad, Almost got one Jaeger squad. They're wiped. Yep. Matilda's lining up one more shot. Couldn't quite polish off the squad, but it was close. Very close. No, oh, there's another close run. So many close runs there. Oh, oh there. there's a very definitely dead one. Yeah, that one beyond close. Beyond close. <laughs> An Imperial Dane autobiography. <laughs> and we got another Marty of a Jesslin. Trembling at the side of the Matilda, he calls on his biggest tank destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whopper. I tell you, when you see the size of this late game behemoth, you are going to shudder in fear. Section riding long, then the Matilda. <laughs> and here it is, based on the Czechoslovakian Panzer 38T. It weighs an astonishing 16 tons. The Marder 3 is now back on the field and ready to devastate the heavy British armor. Well, he's trying to, but there you go. Matt scored a nice side armor shot and Neil McMahon call in. Oh, yes. That's a good, good, good one this time, surely. There it is. That's the flash. Oh, oh, was that it? You need a good eye for naval bombardments. You need a good eye. I mean, and so far, what came so doesn't cool. have that eye. Whoever at Relic added in that little, um, I don't know what noise it is. Like, blink. That's a good noise to add. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it really gives it like some impact. Yeah, but I don't know what it's meant to represent. What is that? Is it your spleen popping when you you're near it? I don't know, like, I've never really been close to an actual new bombardment, so, like, maybe that's actually a thing there. Oh, wow, okay. Fair enough. Like, new bombardment guns are, like, typically massive. We're talking, like, 20 millimeters or 20 centimeters and stuff like that. Like, Yachtiga gun size. 20 centimeters isn't very big, Dane. I'm 182 centimeters, and, you know, that makes me much bigger than, than that, so I don't understand what you're about to be honest. No, 20, as, as a calibre of gun, 20 centimetres is ginormous, isn't it? It is. <laughs> no, even guns bigger than that are mounted on ships. Yeah. 20 centimetres is kind of like on the lower end. Well, originally the the 88 was a uh, World War One naval calibre for the Kriegsmarine. I don't know if it was called Kriegsmarine back in the First World War, but regardless. Um... And yeah, if, over time it transitioned itself into being an anti-air gun, and then of course it was on the on tanks. So transitioned over many generations that caliber in the German military. Oh, good shot from Matt in the Matilda side. We have to have a second Matilda out here for Momo. This is where things get uncomfortable there for Jesselin. Yeah, especially losing pioneers like that because he's going to lose his ability to keep capping the more of his army dissipates. He's uh, down to 65 pop cap, and the Matildas are beginning to chew him up. They are. Oh, Royal Engineers have gone down there elsewhere. Oh, Jaegers are close to being wild. Oh, could see a second go down here as well. Fortuitous retreat path just took them north of that tree and rock, meaning they were out of bounds from the Verbalvins. That was very lucky. 99 VPs remain for Momo, the British player in red. He needs to get the central victory point. Got that officer, yeah. though, just lurking behind the house there. You see him, Dane. He's causing all yeah. kinds of problems. Indeed he is. 
Also, those rocks. They carry that machine gun quite well. And the artillery How do you stop the, the, the artillery officer? What do you do? You just have to find him, I guess. Try and kill him. Yup. And try not to get killed by all the stuff covering the officer. <laughs> oh, gosh. And that stuff covering the officer, is that inside a giant circle of self-healing and self-repair? In this case, it's an MG42. Oh, as well. Okay. We got more Jaegers for Jesselyn. Well, the Bren um, infantry section vet 3 was able to find the officer and force him into the DDL, so he'll be gone for the next couple of minutes, meaning this boy's AT down into the centre will be able to cap the victory point, but not if the MG has anything to say about it. So here comes... Ooh, that was a good rifle grenade on the Vickers. Yeah, nice one. And here comes the Sentinel to keep him off. That dastardly officer, though, is... Within range, not for long though, if the Centaur can do something about it. Jaeger Shrek, push him away. Oh! And the what was the artillery doing? It was still attacking them way outside the circle there. Six is it load then it's yeah. <laughs> was that Basil the cat there, Dave? Yeah. No, he's asleep, he's asleep, he got fed. Oh. Uh, he's happily asleep. Sleep. That's all they do, eh? Now the odds likes to sleep on me. Or... And this infantry section is very dead. I think Momo's running out of ideas here. Yeah, he's, I think, relying too much on just head on assaults against Jesslyn. He needs to get creative. Go on, Dane. What should he do? Well, one option could be going for the bishop just to write some Attila support against smaller Jesslyn support weapons. That could be an option. Another option would be maybe the Grant. Or some foot guards. I'm actually surprised I haven't seen any foot guards at all. There's plenty of things he could pursue, but so far Momo seems very conservative with the strategy. Less than 50 points left to go, so Momo has to make up his mind fast. Yeah, he's getting Royal Engineers at the moment because he's just lacking capping power. He's just so much of his army's dissipated. Jessalyn's getting another Marder. Yeah, it's kind of looking not good here for Momo. Well, this was Momo thinking outside the box, so he's gone for the northern victory point with his Matildas backing him up. That's not a bad option. Meanwhile, in the center, he's fighting his hardest to capture that, but that Vet 3 infantry section's going to die. Oh, dear. Now, that because behind the rocks is continuing to be a massive headache there for Momo, but he got the machine up north, wiped it even. But now, Jesson's grabbed the southern victory point. Oh, dear. Now we got a lot of cold in here. Ooh. That got wiped. Yeah, this is the anti tug rocket. Loiter taking out that Marder. Well, the Loiters, I think, are getting taken out here by the Vibravins. At least one has been knocked out in the skies here. And I think the second one. Yeah. Engines toast. Crashed into the cliffs. Very dramatically. They can't crash into the cliffs. In a you know civil manner, can you? You could try. Yeah, I suppose more politely. Ooh, Sap yeah. has just got latched assassination by the Jaeger Shreks, and that is Momo saying this arty Lamal, meaning GG, well played. You arted my face off with your arty. Yeah. Don't need to tone down the officer further. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why the news like can be like an Overwatch ability rather than just a regular call-in ability. I guess they thought that was just too normal. And again, it should cost munitions, it should have a cooldown, and it should only operate for a certain amount of time. Like, I I'm not into these abilities that just last forever. Designate defensive line and RT officer. I know you, you can push the officer off, don't get me wrong, but... Still, it should cost a decent amount of munitions, or not a decent amount. Yeah. A nominal amount of munitions, let's say 20 or 30 or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, for an ability that just automatically targets the artillery, it costing nothing is kind of bananas. It is bananas. Oh, Momo's fighting back! We thought he was throwing in the towel! No, he was lolling! But instead, he's strangling Jesslyn with it! Yes! He's, he's flicking him with it, playfully, and then he oh, no, strangles no, him my... with it. 
Never mind, he's out of victory points. Ah, oh, okay, there you go. So close, though. We almost had him there. Technically, BM. But uh, let's have a look at the old Bracketarinos, because I think that now means we can see our uh, 4v4 teams ready. Wow, they've been chosen. Okay, so... Um, Dane, it'd be lovely to have you t uh, tomorrow. I'm just going to go to... I might need you further, so hang fire. I'm just going to go speak to Stern Panther because I want to find out how the teams were chosen. All right? So I'll be back with you in a moment. Thank you. All right. Speak to Stern Panther a second. Yeah, hey, mate. <laughs> How's it going, Stern Panther? You're live, by the way. How was the, uh, the drama of choosing the teams? Do you want to talk us through what happened there? Of, uh, as usual, when one drama comes, it comes at the same time. I'll try oh, as well. Okay. <laughs> so go um, on. How how's it happened then? How were the teams yeah, chosen? Fine. I'm live or not live? You're live. Yeah. I mean, ah, okay. if if you something you yeah. need to tell me, you can no, tell no, me okay. off screen. Don't worry. No, it's okay. Just okay, be careful. So, <laughs> yeah. Finally, as you can see, Reds was the winner of the top team, and the other one is Latov. Because they're the highest seed player, both of them. So wow, okay. Goal. Yep, Treads and Latsu for team captains then. I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Like in the school back in the sport. They <laughs> exactly. can choose. Yep, yep. So this, they're both teams then. They are now actually in voice channel on our Discord here. Oh, good. So we could yeah. show that. I just need to be careful yeah, yeah. on screen. And yeah, since Treads was able to choose the teams, uh, Latsu was able to choose if he wants to play Axis or Allies first. So to balance a little bit of stuff. Sure. And yeah, they were playing it soon. They just started like three minutes ago, I guess. So we'll take a time. Yeah. So do you think I should wait for the 4v4 or maybe cast something in the meantime? Uh, you can cast the serious Orange Pass versus Alpen, which they are just finished for two minutes ago. But they finished well. the series? Yeah, Orange Pass versus Alpen. Okay. If it's a if it's not a 2-0, could you send me three replays, please, with a spoiler alerter in there? I mean, it's only two replays. I can give you both replays as well without saying who won. Sure. Who won. Have you... Why does it say 4v4 winners fight? What's that about? Sorry. Um, that's normal because the winning team of the play was just other than two versus two now after that. Oh, is the 4v4 already finished? No, no, no. It's... You know, it's oh, I see. Here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You were you were just try having a look. I see. Sorry. Understood. Um, Yeah, got it. So you were just... Yeah, making sense of it in your own mind yeah. who you think's and gonna I win i will not talk on public here on live and stream yeah <laughs> no I'll, I'll have a break and i'll talk to you about the dramas in a second don't worry but um so we've got these two 4v4 teams they're about to start but there's been some bs as to how the teams are formed let's go through so we've got daniel d momo and Ares and treads on one team and and latouf jibber dexen and Prabati. so we kind of like got a more <laughs> more controversial team and a more standard team. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Definitely. It'll be very interesting to see. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. Okay, so you've heard it here first. We're gonna do Orange Pass versus Alper next, and then we'll cast the four v four afterwards. So uh, be back in a second, guys. Thank you.